Hello, yeah. friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have Lenard, one of the, um, our community members, sharing with us how she started her ghost kitchen operation. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming on board. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Okay. Uh, my name is Lenard, and I am one of the co-owner of Cuisina Leonardo's. But overall, I am the person behind it back. Uh, I created the, uh, the cloud kitchen two years ago already. Um, um, that, but the time, it went on and off because I'm still working as an IT specialist back then. And I just operate it during my off um, from work. So what I do is, um, at first, I operated it as a mobile eatery. Um, mobile eatery is like when you go on park and then you put on some pants and cook the food in there and have some friends with you and cook the food and then serve it to the people. And then on the later part, since then my schedule was actually getting busier, um, I actually started to find some applications that do concierge real time. So there, you can actually book some riders and then deliver the food on different houses that will be ordered online from their social media platform. Mm. But then um, last year, 2019, I got sick from lupus and I have to go back in the province and restart my own life and journey. So during the pandemic season, I was like thinking, how can I restart the business? Because this is something that will actually, you know, help me in a, and also my family during the pandemic season. Because um, my brother also lost his job during the pandemic season, and then my I have a senior citizen father that we also need to take care of. So uh, there's this application that actually called me. And since I was familiar with some applications, delivery applications, I knew that there are some royalties, there are some expenses that I have to pay, like commission, something like that. But then since this delivery services are pioneering in my current location right now. Where are you right now? Uh, we, I, cause there is uh, what we call city and province here in the Philippines. So uh, before I was in the city, now I was on a province location, so which is my hometown. And this uh, application service is actually uh, pioneering. Uh, there are three of them. Uh, one of them is already prestigious. Uh, the second one is... What's their name? Um, we have Mangan PH. We also have Groover Delivery. And we also have Order Mo. Mm. Um, this tree actually has different uh, scenarios, actually. The Mangan PH, uh, they are the pioneer one. They are the first one to exist on delivery services here in the province. So the demand on her contract is different versus the mm. two. So there are tiers of commission from that. Right, right, right. Um, What's the commission yeah. like? Do you mind me asking? Um, the inclusive contract uh, ranges from 8% to 10%. That's it? Do they do, uh, yeah, include but, delivery? Yes, uh, they include the delivery. Wow. So, you know, in North America, they charge anywhere from 20 to 30%. Yeah, the highest percentage actually is 20% for the prestigious application, um, like Mangan. And if you are in the CT, there are different... Um, you know, there are different empires of, of delivery services, uh, food, especially for food, like Food Panda, Grab Food, Lala Food. Uh, these are the ones that has royalties and commissions. And if ever you make no sales in a day, you still need to pay them for royalties. There are some, some applications that are like that. So I, I'm a little bit confused. So what you're saying is the app that you joined right now charges you only 8 to 10% of the sales that you make, which is great. Yeah. Uh, but then they also charge a royalty. Is that how it works? Um, for the current location I have right now, there's no royalty. Gotcha. But, but what you're going to the city yes. with the higher prestige uh, applications, uh, they are the ones charging royalties, whether wow. you make sales or not. How much is royalties? Like, how, how is the royalties based on? Is it like a fee, a flat fee? 
Um, for some, it's a flat fee, but for some, it's a a a, a percentage something that they right. buy just you know the the exact rate. But the one that I tried to apply with when I was still in the CC, they are charging twelve percent per month. Twelve percent plus royalties is, is what they're yes. charging, and the royalties yes. you don't really know how much. Yeah, I I really don't know. How right, much. right, gotcha. So I guess that's because they have much more demand and and higher. Hard costs and That's everything true. too, right? Um, That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Eight to ten percent. You're very. Uh, I guess it's different in Asia because, like, it's such a high volume city, and for them, it makes sense for them to go with lower percentage, but have much more um, people within these ghost kitchens. Now, tell me more about your operations. What is it that you sell? Oh, I actually sell. Um, um, what do you call that? Spanish and Asian food. Pardon? So, Spanish, Asian, and Filipino food. What, so what kind of foods? Like, tell me, tell me some of the dishes. Uh, I want to be inspired. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, we have the spin, uh, the carrot uh, This is peanut stew. Um, peanut stew, made, okay. Um, made out of pork, and um, what I do is the traditional ones. Then I also have sisi, the, the original kapampangan uh, Filipino dish here in the Philippines. What is that? I, Tell me more. Um, like you got describe. Make us want it. Make us pay you for it. <laughs> <laughs> it. This is actually a very authentic dish. Uh, it is made of eardrums, and the sisi means um to snack on something sour, and you oh. have to drink it with ear. And oh. yeah, so the eardrums are actually um, boiled and then it is grilled and then it was cut into very small pieces and it was uh, made tasty with some sour acidic sauces. Wow. And some salty sauces and is this spice. pork eardrum or beef? It's more on pork. Pork, great. Gotcha, yes. gotcha. Wow. And then I also offer Albon Vigas. Um, it's supposed to be called like for some it's just called spaghetti meat meatballs. Yeah. But for me, I made some specialized sauce for that. And my my best sellers are actually the chicken wings. I named oh. them after Spanish names. And the sauces are made from the scratch and formulated by me as well. Wow. So, yeah, all of it are formulated, and I, I, I don't like to tell the secret, but <laughs> the the best secret I have there is cooking it with love with my with my sister because we are the ones cooking as well. Beautiful, that's awesome, that's amazing. And how long have you been operating this? It's been like three, four months. Uh, no, this is just the second month. That second month. Happened. How was your yeah. How was your first experience jumping into a cloud kitchen like this? Like, was it difficult? Was it scary? Like, I know because you have people and your family to take care of. Yeah, actually, at first, because um, I have experience working in a fast food industry when I was still in high school. So this, I, I guess. I have acquired the discipline on moving faster in the kitchen for that thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was also working as a part-time food writer before. So um, some of the information in the kitchen are just disseminated to me. And I guess that is part of the learning. But when you get into the operation, it's really crazy. Um, I didn't expect that the first month will be a blast. Like, what I did is just, you know, operate the social media, tell them that we're operating. But then there is a problem that happens to the application that's supposedly servicing us. So they become delay on the launch. Like I, they said, let, let's say it's August 10th, supposedly the operation. But they told me that August 10th, they will be servicing us. But it got delayed a week or a couple of weeks before we get them. So we have to deliver the food by ourselves to the customers. Oh, wow. So what we do is cook on the same day and then deliver it. It's very exhausting. Well, actually, <laughs> so, you know what? Before we go there, I'm wow, I'm super impressed. Tell me more about like the startup cost. Like, where's your kitchen? Like, I, like was it difficult to find a kitchen? Were, were you scared with this concept? Um, actually, since we're Asian, my mom is uh, loves to collect, you know, kitchen wares. So uh, since since she died uh, years ago, we inherited all of her, 
all of her kitchen tools and her kitchen is actually like around 10 square meter and we have to prepare a long table there that wherein we can put in all the prepared, prepared, uh, in prepared ingredients and then we also have space for chairs that um, for for other materials that we need to put in like um, placing the dishes that we need to wash in our place there and then we also use the dining table we have a rectangular dining table and we use that for the preparation of orders and packaging of orders so what you're saying is that you can operate the ghost kitchen out of your own home is that right yeah yes <laughs> that's wow. right is that a norm yes. is, is that what they allowed um here in the philippines we need licenses actually if you are going to operate an online kitchen so and you can so you can operate from home yes all you have to do is just apply for a license yes but you have to follow the protocols of the government like the safety protocols the sanitation everything because they will check it also they'll send someone to come to your home and check yes that's right oh wow they did. but you and know that's amazing you save on rent and you save yes. on percentages and you just get tons of orders and your drivers will go to your home and your home and come pick up the food and deliver it to your customers that's right yeah but wow. i still made a mistake i'm telling you because i never thought that the business uh will have make more sales and get advertisements from friends and family members that encourage other customers to come in so I have to call people to help us wash dishes. I have mm. to call some people to actually help us cook and chop and other things. And also the drivers. I have, I have expanded on-call riders because during the pandemic season, some people told me, hey, I need to earn extra income. Uh, would you mind to give us some on-call deliveries and we will do it for you. And then what I did is actually give them the delivery charge and then give them 5% commission on, on, from my sales. So at least they, they will be encouraged to advertise as well the business. Wow, but you're then, so smart. But then the mistake is I never seen this overhead expenses. <laughs> so uh, what, I ha what happened is that I made a lot of sales, but the, the money that comes in to the profit is you know uh, a little bit sad <laughs> but... <laughs> okay 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 before we even go there tell me more about what is a blast like how much let's if you're comfortable sharing maybe like uh, american dollars how much were you able to make uh, in terms oh. of revenues roughly r roughly is okay i don't want to pry into all your secrets uh, uh, um i made like around wait a moment do i have to convert it uh, I think it'd be easier for our listeners. Yeah, that'd be good. All right, okay, actually, sure. uh, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't even be in relation to actually. How many orders? Oh, like for my first month, we had like sold a hundred five items. A hundred and five items. Yes, that's that's really good for a first month operation. Yeah. And we had like around twenty two customers. But the repeat customers are not um, counted in that. Mm, we have gotcha. repeated customers already on the first month. And then this journey of the second month, we are facing a economic difficulty right now in the Philippines because the costing went up high oh. economically. So I, I have to adjust as well the prices on my, on my end, right? So, so when you say costing, you, you're talking about ingredient costs, right? Yes. Okay. You know what? I, I'm going to let you off the hook. Cost. I'm not going to pry into your secrets of how much you made, but you know what? Over a hundred orders for a first month operation. I congratulations, you know, like when you have the, have the courage to actually go ahead and try this out and go through the whole process, you know what? Thumbs up to you. Oh, thank you. Good job. Oh, like, you so I, I think it's great. And, and it's amazing that you're able to kind of come, come back to our group and, and to continue to share your wealth of knowledge and your experience with us to motivate and inspire other people. I think that's very something to be yeah. uh, um, applauded on. Um, now, okay, you talked about your, one of your biggest mistakes that we, we talked a little bit about. 
uh, yeah. was your cost of goods sold, the ingredient cost, because you're like, oh, profits were like, nah, not that great. Tell me more. Yeah. Right? Cause I know that you had to increase your price. You said that, uh, uh economically, like the ingredients yeah. and everything went up, right? Tell me more about that. Uh, actually at the moment that is my struggle, but, um, what's the, the struggle? Push, uh, the increase of price mm. because yeah, um, the increase is actually, I, I didn't follow actually the, the really high price because I still take a look at my comp- competitions. Um, because when you're doing a cloud kitchen, you have to identify the target market, the target people. Who are the people that you really want to have to, to be buying from you, right? I so, love that. I love yeah. it. You're one yeah, of the smart ones. This this is this is so crazy because you are you are not, you are um online you're doing it online you are not going there outside because the pandemic is crazy and you are scared of COVID your presence online has to be so strong and for you to be so strong you have to make a target and what are the locations of these people right and what do they do what what is their budget for their meals as well. So that's why I observed my competitors <laughs> and how they sell their price. And I realized that they're doing it between two, two times 2.5 and three. 2.2, 2, or what do you mean? Yeah. 2.2.5 and three, 200, what is that? 200%, 250 250%, 250% and 300%. They move, uh, let's say, Let's say one product is let's say the chicken. Uh the the capital is let's say around two hundred pesos. So they multiply the capital to two hundred percent or two hundred. Right, right, right. So so you're saying cost times three, cost times two is is what it, you're doing. Yeah. Competitors. Ah, so you follow suit and you study your competitors. You're you're amazing. I, I think that's really smart of you. As a first time um restauranteer you're you're following all the best practice rules and how where did you did you go to business school where did you learn uh, no. all these no i didn't um i actually had my mom operate a cafe before when we were young and mm. um i just usually hear her about it that i have to be an observant something like that mm. <laughs> and my stepdad was in accounting and he he at first at the first month he was just doubting me like um <laughs> i think there's something going wrong with your pricing because i think the overheads are not included and i was like so i am in denial because it's my first time so yeah, <laughs> yeah. so when i studied the daily cash flow I, I i actually take a look at everything that i am spending and then what is coming in and then the capital i am I separated it as well. And I realized, oh my God, my dad is so correct. <laughs> I have missed all of this opportunity to know. <laughs> right. So you didn't factor in your overhead costs as to part yeah. of your costing of the, your, your goods and your product. Yes. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. It's okay. Yeah. You know what? It's a learning process. You, you figured it out very fast. It's only been a month, right? So great stuff. Yeah. Like it, that's, it, that's what my dad told me too. Cause he said, at least you realize it in a month or else your business will go down and you will be crying. <laughs> you know so what? Said, yeah. That's what a lot of my clients they, and students, they go through is the fact that they, in the books, they feel like they're making a lot of revenue. Okay. They're making tens yeah. and thousands of revenue. It's like, whoa, money is coming in. That's amazing. And at the end of the month, a lot of expenses come in and they're like, hmm. yeah. How come my bank account is not as much as I thought it would be? And then next month rolls around and they're like, okay, you know what? Keep run, running it along. And, and the revenue keeps coming in and expense keeps going out. And it seems like that they're still kind of in this hamster wheel. Like how come after a year of doing all the hard work, I'm still not making money? Like in books, yeah. I, it feels like I'm making like 25%, <laughs> but in my yeah. bank is like 5%. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, so great stuff on, on, on doing your calculations, finding out so soon. Yeah, and actually one thing that I also realized for the expenses, I spent a lot of money on legalities mm. from the first month. But all of this money came from the profit already of the business, which is, that's why I was thinking, why my expenses are so high? And then 
I just realized that there are so many documents that I have to follow and comply with that I used the money of the of the business already for for that to be complied. Gotcha. No, that's that's amazing. Like, and thank you for sharing this story because I think a lot of our listeners can be inspired and see exactly what you've gone through and actually learn because every time I, I always preach about know your customers, know your customers, know your customers. And and that's yeah, something yeah. that I always have to tell people and people are always going back down to the idea. I mean, ideas are great, but then if you don't know who your customers are, customers it's very are. difficult, right? So that's thank right. you for sharing that. Yeah, actually I made notes for that. Actually, for me, marketing and PR are very tedious job on doing the business for the cloud kitchen since you are only doing it online and there's a less interaction outside. You have to make the online presence very interactive by reaching the community and as well as your branding um, mm. without losing it. I mean, you know, people will think that the brand is the logo or things like that, right? And you have mentioned that in one of your video, but it's not. It's it's like the same as the restaurant that is existing um, physically. Um, it's the ambience. It's the way you approach them. Totally. So, um, yeah, uh, what I learned um, first is you have to know who is your customer. You have to know the location. You have to know the food products that is trendy for them. And... Uh, if ever it's not trendy, how you will sell the food product to them that will not appear as a, a selling, but instead it will appear like you're the brand for that product. For the mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then for the promotions, these are actually, for me at the moment, this is my, one of my struggles as well because um, during my first month, many people ask me, hey, do you have 40 packages? Because we are 10 in the family and we would like to have 10 persons to be served in one package, one offering. And then now I created like a amount of packages and I don't know how to schedule it now on my social media. <laughs> right, right. Gotcha. You know what? We'll, we'll take that conversation offline and I'll give you some tips and, and tricks as well. A hundred percent. And you know what? It's, it's crazy to see your growth. And I mean, like you have been in the community all along and I, once again, thank you so much for your time for, for jumping on this and sharing your lessons you've learned, your experience in growing this. And I, I know you're going to be like super successful within your business. I now. So. I'll keep yeah. tabs with you. You're in the community. Just keep us up to date. And you know what? We'll get you back on the interview and see how you're able to grow to multiple different ghost kitchen locations in the future. Oh my God, that's so <laughs> great. Actually, I was looking forward someday that when the COVID is over and get the chance to meet some of the people in the group and also collaborate with some with some products because you know I also have some of weaknesses that I need to improve especially on creating new products and new food that I can offer and of course for the technicalities of restaurant because I'm not yet a, a good one you know <laughs> I need to learn more <laughs> perfect if if our viewers and our audience and our friends want to come find you support you how can they find you do you have a social media link do you have Instagram or what do you have yeah we actually have social media accounts. We have YouTube for Casino Leonardo's. Uh, we also have Instagram, Casino Leonardo's as well. And Facebook page, which is Casino Leonardo's. Perfect. And the, yeah. I will, I'll include those into the description link below because I don't think people would be able to like kind of hear everything uh, all at once. But nonetheless, no, no I really appreciate you jumping on, uh, sharing all the goodies with us. Uh, I hope that everyone's going to come and support you, like your page, and just see what you're up to. Yeah, thank you so much to Wilson. I do appreciate your time for me too today. And uh, thank you so much as well for all the videos that you're sharing. It's very knowledgeable and very informative, especially for a new one like me.